Hello folks, I have some things to say before this video starts, okay? First things first, I in no way made this to come off as like a 40 plus hours with no power challenge or something like that, or to be insensitive or to act privileged and like a weirdo. Like I honestly only filmed this because one, it was suggested to me by my neighbor when the power first went out. She was like, you should make a vlog about it. It would be really interesting for people to watch. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And also I was home alone. So I had like pretty much no one to talk to. And so it was really nice to have my camera around. I also just really wanted to like document this experience. One thing last year with the Oregon wildfires, I really wish that I documented like our leaving process, but like evacuation was just so hard that I um, I didn't really think to do that. And so I wanted to film this during the power outages just to kind of show like the Oregon experience, I suppose. And also I just want to say when I filmed this, I had no idea that a similar thing was happening in Texas, but on a much, much larger scale with much colder temperatures. I want to make that clear. Like the temperatures for us were around 28, 26 at night on the first few nights of the power outage here in Oregon. And then during days it was like 32 to 36 ish it wasn't like nine degrees or anything like that so I just want to say my heart is with you my Texas people I have so many friends and so much family in Texas and I just want to say I love you and I know that's not enough but I'm gonna be linking some mutual aid resources in the description box because Texas needs our help because their government is like failing them so hard right now and I'm so so sorry because you know while we did have a similar situation here with like food shortage and gas shortages it's just so different with the temperature change and also our state has a little bit more infrastructure to handle events like this although even though we're in the north we really don't have great infrastructure for handling snow so yes please check the description box for ways to help Texas right now with donations and everything like that and checking in on your family if you have family in Texas all my family is okay all my friends are okay they're just coping you know but I also really want to note before you guys watch this that my experience here in Oregon Oregon is also very different from like the average Joe because I live in farm country and people out here are very uh, resourceful and a lot of them have access to things that I wouldn't necessarily have access to if I were living in a city like Los Angeles and had a huge power outage and you'll see that throughout this video like I got help from temporary solutions like my neighbors had a generator they hooked it up to pump their well water they had a freshwater pond that I could go and get buckets from some of my neighbors offered me free firewood to keep me warm I also because I grew so much food last year especially in my school squash and stuff like that. I had a really large access of, you know, winter stores of food so that I wouldn't starve if this were to last longer. So like, I just want to say that my situation is very different and honestly privileged in the way that I was able to handle this. And I just want to make that disclaimer because like, this isn't the average Joe's experience in a city at all. My neighbors are very giving. They're very helpful. They bought me stuff like you'll see okay and also i just want to say like i'm completely aware that people live totally fine without power or without running water and also some people choose to live off grid and like hook up themselves to solar panels and stuff like that um, but we rent this house and so we're not on solar we're just chilling with our propane heat that works through clicking on through electricity we're on a well but without the generator we couldn't pump it to our house and so we're used to having electricity we're used to it powering our lives which is like you know i wish we could get to a place in the future where we can be more off-grid but for right now that's not our reality and so i really wanted to show kind of how much we take those things like subconsciously for granted like you just wake up and you're like oh i can use my electric kettle to like do my coffee in the morning or I can just flush my toilet and every time it flushes I don't think wow electricity made that happen and to kind of describe this experience or like the situation I would describe it like this okay you know when you go camping and you're like prepping and you're packing and you have all your things because you're ready to go out into nature and not have access to electricity or in some cases depending on where you camp running water you are prepared for that but when you're in like the luxury of your own home and then the power goes out you're like wait <laughs> I wasn't prepared to camp right now 
Also, I don't normally camp in the middle of winter, so like I have to figure this out. And so the shock of it is kind of like, wow, what the heck? I really gotta get things together and in order and figure out how I'm gonna like survive this. And so that's what I wanted to show in this. I'm also very lucky to have like some camping supplies, whereas some people probably didn't have those things. I had a lot of lanterns, I had the heat from my wood stove, I had access to things that not everybody has access to. So I just kind of wanted to describe the situation, but just think of it like how I described it with the camping and also just add in a little sprinkle of loneliness, a little sprinkle of panic because I didn't know how long it would last and um, I was just waiting it out. So uh, enjoy. I love you. Please check out the description and help Texas. Greetings loved ones. The day is February 13th and here in Oregon we didn't even get that much snow but um, a lot of the power lines went down last night because of all of the ice on the trees making the trees fall. They fell on the power lines. They messed with the transformers. There's just been power outages since last night at around six. And um, if you watch me on Twitch, you would know this for sure because I was doing a sim stream last night on Friday night, the 12th, and the power went out right as I was setting up my stream. It went out two times as well during my stream. And then by the second time I was like, okay, this isn't coming back on. And it was off for probably about an hour and a half and then it turned back on and um, I was just chilling. I was like watching a movie and at no point did I think in my head, wow, the power's on right now. I should go and fill all of my water bottles because the pumps to my house from our well use electricity to run. But I do have one almost full hydro flask. Also, I'm home alone right now, so just like documenting home alone during power outage times with just my dogs and my pigs. I actually just went out to feed the pigs and I talked to my neighbor Olya and she and her husband John are on some survival shit, you know what I mean? They're like hooked up to a generator right now. They have a pond, they have solar to one of their buildings. So she was like, let me know if you need absolutely anything. Like we can totally help. You can bring some buckets over here. You can fill them up at our pond to like flush your toilets because the reason we're like in it for the long haul she said prepare for that because right now there's 300,000 homes without power in Oregon and you know I'm just in a little tiny town on the map this isn't Portland so you know it's not it's not top priority for them she was like they're gonna try to fix it by like tomorrow on Valentine's Day but like not really sure so just kind of like prep for the worst and I was like okay yeah I can do this. I am a strong, capable queen. I can do this. I can chop my own wood. I can fill my time with reading books and doing projects by the daylight and going to bed when the sun goes down because there's not anything fucking else to do. And also, like I said, I had the nerve to watch a freaking movie last night when the parrot came back on for like an hour. And then when it shut back off, I was like, well, shit, all right. So I just was working by the light of my candles on this memory book that I'm giving Finley for Valentine's Day and I only have a couple pages in it left so I could probably finish that today. But once I was done with it, it was probably like 1.30, really late, right? I went up to bed and I was like, mm, so weird that the power hasn't come back on yet. Whatever, I'll just plug in my phone and like, you know, it'll, my phone will start charging when the power comes back on in the morning. And I woke up, there's no power, it's the next morning. And also, Guys, I actually kind of, it's making me emotional to talk about this because I'm so sad. I have so many memories attached to these trees just in the three years of living here, but our cherry tree and our plum tree fell down. I'm so sad. Those are my favorite trees in spring. Like, are you kidding? And in the summertime with the cherries, ah, I'm pissed off, man. They both fell. Why the fruit bearing trees? God damn, you know? So horrible news. I also woke up with my period. So, you know, the fruit trees was one thing, but the period, oh God, why now? So my toilets are no longer flushing. So that's been really fun. Um, I also didn't brush my teeth this morning because I didn't want to waste my drinking water on brushing my teeth. So, you know, it's just me and the dogs. So nobody's really smelling this. Uh, but I did realize that I am going to have to light a fire and keep that fire going for the whole entire day. So I just wanted to kind of document this 
see how I do in survival times until the power gets back on. Um, I was doing pretty good last night, honestly. When it first went out, I was like, here I go on my candle shit. And um, it was totally fine using all of my candles to light this space. I have a handful of them that I've just been like putting around me to work and read and stuff. And I'm getting better at chopping wood, but I'm not great. So it is kind of hard for me to chop kindling and you guys will probably see that in this vlog. But like I said, I am getting better than I used to be. So it's just like practice makes perfect. I have to like hit it in a certain location, like chip it away, to like get smaller pieces. This was one of my goals of 2021 was to learn how to chop wood. So we're gonna get after that today. I um, went out and I fed the pigs. The pigs are doing fine. They have not like touched their water because like I said in my last video that I uploaded, they have a heat lamp in their house that they sleep in. And I think that sleeping with the heat lamp really Really, like sucks the water out of their bodies and makes them really dehydrated because last night the heat lamp wasn't on and their bowl of water was full this morning like they didn't even touch it you know so definitely it's correlated to that for them like they get really thirsty when they sleep with that but they're, they're chilling they're fine they're just like grazing in the snow and they're unfazed the heat lamp is a luxury for them not a necessity they're big fatty ladies they can last uh, but my dogs on the other hand are very high maintenance they're underneath these blankets it's Larry's over here, Rue's right here. Rue spent half the morning crying at me because she was cold. She didn't want to wake up. She didn't want to go outside to the bathroom because she would be even colder, but she just went out and did a big poop. So that's what's happening in my neck of the woods. Also, I just poured myself a mug of coffee, but it's not hot. It's from yesterday and it's very cold. So I might heat this on um, the wood stove once I get it going. Also, disclaimer, my wood stove is not a traditional wood stove with a closing door. Well, it, it was once, but the last tenant who lived here ripped the door off of it, so it's more like an open-faced fireplace now, and it heats the house reasonably well, probably about, about like 10 degrees. But in a time like this where my propane heating is not working to the house, like this is gonna be my main source of energy, so yeah. Anyways. My neighbor Olya told me to document this experience, so shout out to her for this video idea. And um, let's get into it, okay? Let's go chop this damn ass wood. I've gotten like four swigs of coffee down in my body now and I'm ready to take on anything. <laughs> oh, also shout out to my mom for giving us this Tac Life car charger. It has a compass on it, it has USBs on it. And I'm charging my phone with it right now and it is currently at 85%. You are so dramatic, Rue. Really, you really are. I'm gonna go chop wood and make you warm, okay? <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, God. Keep it up. You can do it. Woohoo! Put your back into it. Another swing. You got it. This is what I'm trying to get for kindling off the side of it. So hard to get off the side. I don't know why I'm so bad at chopping kindling. It's so hard to get the small pieces for me. See, this is just hard, man. Can't do it. No, I can't. I can do it. Eventually. This takes a lot of upper body strength, I'll tell you that much. That one almost went through. Yes. She is kindling. Also, speaking of kindling, I burn pretty much all of these with my fire to start it as well. So I'll collect like little leaves and little pieces of, you know, wood that have fallen off these logs and stack them too and add it to the pile. So I just add him to my carrier bag. All right, let's see how she does this time. Full swing. It's not going well. Yes. Kindling for me. This is fantastic news. All my little baby pieces. Can she do it again? That's the real question. Not there. I'm so sweaty. It's my workout. See, I'm seeing the splitting down here. 
but it's not like actually going. I see the line. It just hasn't completed. Yes. Nice. Okay. This should be fine. All right, folks, let's build this fire. I have a new technique for building fires right now where I do logs in like a four log kind of rectangle around the inside of the wood stove, stuff it with paper, lay the kindling on top of it, like some of the um, kind of smaller pieces of wood, stack them over it. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. Just making sure my flue is all the way open. I'm gonna teach you how to build a fire, all right? So this was actually on my New Year's resolution list last year, and I learned how to do it. So um, hopefully I can help someone else learn how to build a fire if their parents never taught them. My parents never taught me. No offense to them, but like, you know, kind of a, a survival skill. All right, so ideally I would want smaller logs for this, but I don't have them today. This might actually even be too thick of logs, but for right now, I'm just going to stuff the center of this with these napkins that I found last night, but I do not need all these napkins, slash I never need napkins from fast food places, but they continue to give me them. So I'm using them for fire starter. So thanks Chipotle, I appreciate it. So I'm putting this in because I'm actually out of newspaper right now, and we have a compostable bag that we keep outside for all of our paper compost that we bury. And I don't know where Finley put it. Like he must have dragged it somewhere and buried it because I cannot find it on the back porch. It's crazy. So that's what I would normally like fill this basket with is I would go out to the paper compost and take some of it and put it in here, but don't know where it is. So what the hell can you do? But we keep our paper compost separate also so that we can use some of that not only for fire starting, but also for mycelium to eat the paper um, and cardboard and stuff like that. So yeah, anyways, that's a little bit about me. I'm taking all these leaves, little twigs, kind of sprinkling them over it. I'm gonna bring you closer just so you're not looking at my behind. So this is why I said that it might be a little bit too crowded in here today, but we're gonna see if I can blow from this side under here because oxygen is gonna help it kind of start. Um, but I'm just stacking these little bits of the stuff that falls to the bottom of my carrier on top of here because honestly it's really beneficial and this is also great for outdoor fire survival like having all of this kind of just lush stuff around just kidding it's not lush it's literally dead but um, then i just kind of stack little things over it i'm going to keep these bigger kind of slabs to the side for right now and just add in all of this so that it actually helps it catch at the beginning. All right, I think you can kind of see that. Also, sorry for all of this. It hasn't been vacuumed in a very long time. And I know I look insane right now. Aesthetics are not the main part of this video. It is literally just survival, okay? <laughs> so I'll look cute later if I have the time. But I'm just lighting the paper. In a couple of different areas, you're gonna wanna light the paper so that it can catch in various places. And you'll just kind of wait, blow, to spread it. And while that's catching, I'm gonna lay these ones kind of over it to catch further on the big ones. Cause once those start burning and going, then like you're freaking good to go. Come on girl. Sometimes I stuff in little pieces of paper to catch next to it so that when it burns the fire, it starts to burn the bark or the, the little piece of wood faster. But you don't always have to do that. I also don't really wanna waste all of my paper source doing that. But I'm just kind of making sure that this center tiny log is still burning because if I close the flue ter too early and um, don't make sure that the smoke is burning too, the fire will go out. Um, so we're just kind of waiting for it all to catch. But what I really like about this log idea where I kind of stack them around in a square is that it really centralizes the heat to the center and um, something that was an issue for me with like the TP method of you know stuffing the paper at the bottom and then using these tinier pieces of kindling to make kind of more of like a TP structure 
um, like a pyramid. I was struggling with that because the fire at the bottom wouldn't get tall enough to reach the top or it would collapse in on itself and like put out the light. But this, see, especially with the, the trees that we use, our neighbor Steve actually cuts and sells wood. He's on his lumberjack shit. I'm on my lumberjack shit today too, boys. The trees that he cuts are from the logging land behind our house. So it's a lot of like Douglas firs and stuff like that that have this kind of like really thick bark. And that's my favorite thing to burn too, to start a fire like this because the, the bark almost adds like a layer of insulation to the wood and it burns for much, much longer than say like a small little piece like this with no bark on it. Um, so yeah. Anyways, as you can see, it has caught. I'm gonna put another smaller piece over the top just so it catches more over to this side. And then it'll start burning this one a little bit more because it's kind of like more right-sided right now and I need it to be on both sides. I'm gonna actually insert this down. Whatever, we'll watch it. Great, so once I'm like sure that this is gonna keep going and I see some of the bark, especially in the back back here, turning like red hot, like it's turning into coals, um, then I'm gonna close the flue on the top of my stove a little bit more. Not all the way, but enough to retain more heat. And so I kind of close the flue to like have, I don't know, two inches or so. Hi, Rio. You wanna get close to the fire because you're cold? <laughs> She's so ridiculous. Are you kind of like a woman who loves luxury, Rio? Yeah. You don't want to build the fire, you want to enjoy the fire that was built. I get it. I get it. Yeah, I can move your bed over here if you wanted. Okay, now we're cooking with gas, boys. Look at this. It is like catching on this log, it's going out to this side, it's burning all four logs around. So that's what I really like about this method as well. So we love her work. I'm gonna gate her off so that no sparks go flying. And I'll keep this going for the whole freaking day. Hope you enjoyed your tutorial. I'm probably just gonna read for the whole day, honestly. Don't really know what else to do. Should probably conserve the battery on my portable charger thing as well. So I'm trying to like wait for my phone to get to fully charged and then just leave it. I also, wait, I just got a text from my neighbor, Olya, that said we found an old generator that might have the capacity to run more things so we can get the water pump going. And when we do, I'll let you know so you can come fill up drinking water from our well. It is great water. <gasps> See, this is why Oregonians are actually the nicest people in the whole entire fucking world. And my neighbors are the greatest people to ever exist on planet Earth. Also, wait, I don't think I ever said this. Hi, Larry. Hi, but Finley's out of town, so he doesn't get home until like some point tomorrow on Valentine's Day. And I just called the um, power company PGE and they have like an automated phone system that like gives you power outage updates. And they said for my address and neighborhood, it probably won't come back on until 9.30 tomorrow night. So great. I don't know what's happening with anything. Things are very uncertain with so many homes out of power. So I'm not really even like counting on tomorrow for it to come on, you know? I'm hoping for it though. That would be great. <laughs> this is my breakfast slash lunch, by the way. Peace, love, bread. That's what I say. It'll really just be good for me to have this for a few hours. Don't really know what I'm gonna do for dinner quite yet. Probably just have leftovers that are in the fridge, so. It's cold enough in the house, honestly. I could just kind of keep them out. Feels like a fridge in here. Except for in front of the fire, obviously. But like in the kitchen, it's fucking cold in there. Shit. Okay, folks, let's see. Ooh, yeah, this is really warm. Ooh, and even toasty. Delicious. Great. Don't mind if I do. Mm-hmm. Great work, Pan. Great work, Fire. Great work, Bagel. We make a great team. Okay, it's currently about one and I just brought in my second load of logs to put on the fire. I still have a fair amount still in there, just like hot coals, but they're burning away. So I'm just gonna add some more on the top. But what I realized is like a bag of these will average me about two hours of burning <laughs> and I can fit about like six to eight logs in here, depending on size. So. That's just some math for you that I'm taking into account. All right, folks, I've just made it to part three in my book. So 
I'm gonna freaking just take a break for a second there. I have updates for you as well. So my neighbor Olya just called me and she said that they're going into town to the only gas station around that has power and she was like, do you need anything? Like, just wanna make sure that you're good. And I was like, honestly, like the only thing that I'm like, oh shit, I really need to get that is water um, for the dogs, for myself, for the pigs. So I think that what I'm gonna do while they're out is go to their pond in their yard and they have like a natural spring that pumps out there and I'm just gonna fill up like two big buckets of water, load them into the back of the truck. But she was like, do you want me to get you like a gallon of drinking water just in case? Like, so you don't have to lug it and you'll just have one if this ends up being longer than normal. And I was like, sure, <laughs> why not? So she's getting me water. As for food, so, I live in an area where pizza delivery does not come out here. Um, I can't just like order to go food to be delivered to my house. So I'm pretty much like either living off the land <laughs> or living off my storage of canned stuff or stuff that I have in my pantry, you know what I mean? So I have a lot of just random staples like rice and pasta and stuff like that. So I know I'm gonna be like totally fine when it comes to food and that kind of stuff. And as for produce right now, growing in the winter still, I only have onions, beets, and then some mustard greens that are like kind of coming back up. So I could eat that stuff as well as like fresh herbs in my front garden and stuff too. Um, but I'm probably just gonna be doing leftovers and um, pantry staples for right now. And so when she was like, do you need anything? I was like, I don't think I really need food or anything. I feel like I can kind of make do. I also don't really want her to like buy me anything, you know, or feel like she has to do it, but she's just nice. So she's just giving me the water. But that's my update for you. I am gonna go and find some buckets in the basement to bring over there though. And I need to find our filtration system in our camping gear. Dumbass moment check. I actually forgot that Finley's camping backpack got stolen out of his car in California last year. Um, it was like in his trunk and I guess he didn't lock the car and somebody stole it out. So we had to replace all of our camping gear, water pump included, like water filtration system. We had like a catadin, I think it's called, and we didn't replace that because we couldn't find it at REI. So we do have a water bag, kind of like a camelback situation that I can fill up and like hang somewhere in the house just for now. But other than that, we do have this like propane cooker thing and then I have propane in the car. Actually, fuck, I think it's in the Lexus. And then this is just like camping cookware, like a pan. But I think that what will be really helpful is the lanterns. So I just took out, this is a dog bone, by the way. I just took out um, the camping lantern, a little flashlight, and then a headlamp. So these are the things that I do have other than just like, you know, tent stuff that I don't need because I'm at my house. But fuck, man. <laughs> Thought I had that filter. I don't. Finley was right. He told me that he didn't think we had the filter anymore and I was like, no, we totally replaced it and we didn't. So anyways, fuck. I'm gonna go over to Olya and John's. The definition of good old country living is people checking on other people. <laughs> so like I just drove my car over here and one of our neighbors up the road, Bruce, he knows Olya and John and he saw uh, my car pull in here and he was like, who the hell is that? Like, I've never seen that truck before. And he was looking for Olya and John and they're not home right now. They're running errands, like I said. So he just came over to like, see who was over here. And I actually just ran back to the house to get my muck boots on. And he was pulling into their driveway and was like, hello, hello, like screaming, like whose truck is this? And I was like, hey man, sorry. Like they just told me I could come over. And he was like, oh, I didn't recognize that rig. I'm Bruce. Um, I just wanted to make sure that like everything's okay and like some random person didn't just like come over into their yard And I was like, yep, yeah, no, just me. Just their old neighbor, Megan. So after that, I'm gonna fill up now. I have my big buckets down here. I'm just gonna probably keep you there. Fill up this as well.
gonna fill up my other little containers just in case. As you can see, the water isn't super, super clear, but it's definitely more clear than like muddy stuff and better than not having water. I feel like because I didn't have my filter though, I'll probably just like boil the water before I drink it if I were to drink this. Let's go back home. I parked the car next to my front porch so that I can just bring in the buckets easier and not have to go through the whole yard. Come on, Ro. Do you want to help? You haven't really been a lot of help yet, Ro. Come on. Oh, I can't believe our cherry tree fell down, man. I'm pissed off. All right, I'm just gonna keep the buckets out here so that I don't have to spill them inside because the lids aren't that great. Are you really cold? You thought I was never gonna come back? I was just getting a little water. She's just dramatic. All right, folks, 4 p.m. update. So I made this last night, mashed potatoes with some nutritional yeast and then uh, vegan spicy chicken patty. And I had put it in the fridge late night and now I'm just like reheating it on the stove for lunch. And then for dinner, I'll probably make some sort of like a stew or something with my canned stuff. Mmm, delicious, this is still good. This is my second fire of the day, it's still going around four. Like I said, the logs last um, about two hours. Rue's loving it. Olya and John just texted me that they got me two jugs of water, like two big gallon ones. So when they get home, I'm gonna go over and get that. And then I also need to get pieces of printer paper from Olya because I literally only have two pages left in the memory book, yet I have no paper in the whole house. So she told me I could borrow a handful of pieces of paper from her. So thank Gord for that. I'll finish my project and just hang the hell out for the night. Honestly, it's getting like rapidly darker outside now that it's four. <laughs> and I just know that like, as soon as the sun goes down, I'm just gonna get tired so fast because honestly, there's really not much to do when there's no internet. I don't really wanna use my phone battery a bunch. I'm just kind of reading, just kind of staring at the fire, cuddling the dogs. Like it's really just, <laughs> Very low key. <laughs> um, so there's not much to do. And I would normally work out or something just out of boredom, but I also, I can't shower. And then I'll be really stinky and sweaty even more so, you know? <sighs> so just waiting, waiting it out. Okay guys, out of sheer boredom and the fact that this is on my to-do list, I'm gonna go and repot this very long pothos so it can continue growing through my macrame plant holder at the top of my stairs because it just needs to actually have drainage because it doesn't. And I don't know why I never put it in a pot to have it drained, but I'm gonna go try and do that now. So that's my current plan. And I'll also go over to Olya and John's and get the stuff after. It looks like they just got home. I can see their driveway, so I don't want to just go over there and be like, hey, just pulled in, what's up? You know, I'm gonna give them a second. There's literally like no soil in here at all. It's like all roots. It's crazy. Yeah, this is not looking how I want it to look. <laughs> I'm gonna do this as a temporary solution. Why not? I also need to wash my hands. Hello. Okay, I'll come grab it. One second. Okay, guys, I've got my paper and my water. And I need to heave it on inside and come back for my little planty. They're so nice. They gave me this for free. Legends. I don't know what to do about this pot situation because I was going to put it in here and then inside of the smaller pot to drain it. But now I'm like, fuck, it looks so ugly. Whatever, I'll fix it. Eventually. Rue and I are just sitting at the table, working on the memory book. She's really doing a lot of kissing. Are you happy now? Cause the house is warm and life is good and you ate all your Kimmy Gibblers? Is that a yes? It's 
tiny girl. Huge belly. All right, folks, it's officially very freaking dark in here. It's 548, and I just finished our 2020 memory book. I drew this little doodle on the back page to say the end of 2020 in memories. I just need to clip in my last little pages into the binder, decorate the front, and hang the hell out for the rest of the night. But I wanna finish this project really quickly before I you know, kick my feet up and I don't know what I'm gonna do for the rest of the night. But I just decided that I needed to let you guys know that it's officially the witching hour. I don't know what I mean by that. It's just dark. I need to take out some lanterns and um, maybe light some candles. First things first. Yeah, I feel good about this. Just gonna finish up by the light of my lantern and I'll get back to you later. All right, I've got my candles lit around the living room and I just went out with my lantern and got more logs. This is gonna be my fourth fill up of the day. It's about 6.30ish right now. All right, folks. I am currently heating up some veggie fried rice, just some leftovers in there. I just texted my friends in Oregon City like, you too? And they're like, yep, don't really know what to do. So I'm like, yep, welcome to the club. <laughs> I think Portland still has power though, I'm pretty sure. But this is like a huge power outage. Like, what the even freaking crap? Well, this just did. Life is boring as bricks with no power. I've been laying in my dog's bed in front of the fire for like an hour. It's just so comfy here, Rue. I might sleep here. Fuck it, you know? I got nothing to lose anymore, Rudel Doodle. I guess, well, I do have heat to lose. Yeah, maybe I should sleep down here. <laughs> what are you doing? You wanna play? Honestly, enough about me. The dogs are probably so over this, they're like, come on, man. Can we just like party and sleep by the space heater like we usually do? Nobody wants to sleep in front of the fire. It's too crackly for them. They want to sleep in front of the space heater like a bunch of spoiled little beachers. I've spoiled them. It's true. Larry, where are you going? What the heck? On another note, I finished the gigantic 2020 memory book. I know you can barely see it but it's pretty exciting stuff. Finley Orstrom's 2020 in photos of fartadelic bichers, reebs, fat hogs, video games, gardening, and a wife-to-be. Love, Meg. This shit is huge. It took me multiple months. I've been working on this since December, so I'm really happy that it's done. But the only downside is that my freaking stickers, my 2020 stickers, keep falling off. I mean, I cut these up specifically from other stickers. It was a very tedious process. It goes from light pink to medium pink to dark pink to red. And it's supposed to be Valentine's Day themed. And if these fall off, well, what the hell else am I supposed to do? I guess I could put like a piece of clear tape over them, but I don't really have any, so. Fuck. Larry's really thirsty. Good boy. You know when you're just sitting somewhere in your house and you're like, I gotta switch it up right now. I gotta find a different seating arrangement, get a different perspective on the room. Well, that's how I am right now. <laughs> I'm reading the book, just making sure that I didn't make any silly mistakes like on the pages because I have made some writing errors. <laughs> Some grammatical errors, so I've been going back and correcting things and um, just chilling in front of the fire. I got everything I need over here. I got my candlesticks up here, providing me with light. I got the bichers in the beds next to me. I think Larry actually just excused himself. Right when he saw the camera, he said, I have to go eat dinner right now. I have my snacks next to me. I have some peanut butter pretzels and dark chocolates. He's all caramels. I'm on my fifth fire, if you're wondering, and it's about 10 freaking 30. I thought I would be very tired very early, but um, I don't go to bed early, so. Oh, you're cute, Larry. I feel like he never makes himself known very often, so when he does something this cute. <laughs> He wants to hang out. But yes, it's 10.30, thought I would go to bed earlier. I'm not, I'm just doing Valentine's Day shit. Did I already tell you guys that I made a date jar? 
I don't think I even showed it to you. I'll show it to you tomorrow. I don't want to get up. I'm too comfortable right now. But I made a jar full of date ideas. Just in case. I put a lot of different variations in there. I also consider a date playing a board game together. So I put a lot of those in there too. Play Bastion. Play Ticket to Ride. It was just great. Great job on my part. Really getting innovative over here and creative. Somebody actually gave me the idea to do a date jar on one of our Twitch streams. They were like, I'm making my boyfriend a date jar. And I was like, wait, that's an iconic concept. Like sometimes you just can't think of what to do. You need the date jar. Okay, so the sticker idea was a horrible idea. I will be removing all of them. Literally, even if I just like move my hand over them, they just immediately come off. So they need to be taped down. It was a horrible idea to spend so much time on these tiny stickers. But other than that, the book's great. Love her work. I'm really glad I went through that because I was looking for grammar errors and this just in, there was a lot of them. So I just corrected those. And now I'm just watching the fire go out, kind of. There's still three logs left, but I think I'm just gonna hit the freaking hay. Honestly, oh my God, you scared the shit out of me. He's being so silly. Every time I talk to the camera tonight, he's like, hey, put it on me, please. <laughs> he has things to say this evening. Honestly though, I'm thinking that I'm just gonna kind of bundle myself up with my bichers and head up to bed um, and not sleep down here on the couch or drag the guest bed, the twin size bed that we have in this room right over here, out to in front of the fire or anything. Cause I don't want to like tend the fire. I just want to sleep. And then I will wake up, I'll make a new fire. And then Finley will come back into town and we'll have Valentine's day together. It'll be great. We just need to go to sleep. <laughs> it's like 11 now. And I'm just kind of like, what the fuck else is there to do but read? I don't want to read anymore. And I also finished all my arts and crafts for the day. So these dogs are tired. They want to hit the freaking hay. So I'll probably just see you in the morning. I don't think I'll end this vlog off here. I'll probably just keep talking to you because it's like we're hanging out, you know? All right, dogs, let's go up to bed. They want to play now that it's 11. Love that for them. Love the timing. Hello guys, here is your day two morning update. I woke up around 8.30 and I went back to sleep because I didn't wanna be awake. <laughs> I was just like, what am I supposed to do? Like, just go downstairs and start burning wood that's already dwindling down, you know what I mean? Like, I'm warm here in the bed, let's just, I put my beanie back on my head because I had taken it off to go to sleep and that was the only thing that was cold was my ears, like the top of my head was just, whew, it's frozen. So I put my beanie back on, I went back to bed. It's now 11.30 and I actually just got a very helpful message from my neighbor, Olya, who is my guardian angel and helpful queen. And she texted me, hey lady, we just had a neighbor help us hook up the generator to our fresh water pump. So we have fresh drinking water and it is by the chicken coop that actually pumps water out of our hose. So that water is 100% safe to drink. It's exactly what we drink inside. So if you need any fresh drinking water, come on by and fill on up. Legend, like thank you so much. Now I don't have to boil everything to drink it, but I can still use those buckets that I got yesterday to like flush toilets and stuff and wash myself. Our neighbor that is a volunteer fire department person said it is definitely going to be a few more days because something is really messed up near Estacada and they're having to repair that area to get power out here. So plan ahead, but if it comes on earlier, we will all just be extra prepared. If you're going to go to the grocery store to run errands or anything, definitely call the store first and make sure they're open. We went all the way up to Portland today and it is extremely icy and snowy there right now. So I would probably look for more south. And I basically was like, wow you are an absolute legend like thank you so much literally anytime something happens here where i need help with something or like the whole community needs help with something olia is my number one gal <laughs> truly her and her husband john just come through with the solutions and i'm just so grateful for that so water is a go also for the grocery comment that she made 
that's why I haven't left the house to go get groceries um, partially because we have staples here like pasta and some potatoes and broccoli and stuff like that still in my fridge that's fine and hasn't gone bad yet and then we have like a small amount of produce in the garden but honestly I also don't want to leave because just like at the beginning of the pandemic like people panic by they're like oh my god it's the end of the world it's the apocalypse like I'm gonna go and buy all this stuff during the fires everybody bought all the safety stuff from all the stores around and I just don't want to go and like participate in that if I'm being honest with you like I know I'm okay here <laughs> I'm just a little bit stinky I'm a little hungry right now and my main issue is that I don't know how to grind my coffee beans so I've got it good anywho Finley is currently packing his car in California I'm sending him to get all the groceries in California that's another reason why I don't want to do it myself is because everything up here panic buying not interested really in doing that and he's in california can get a generator for us maybe some more wood some potatoes i told him get some beer and anything else that you want at the house because well i i want the beer and the potatoes <laughs> and the generator i feel like everybody out here has a generator except us Ugh. i just hear them i go outside and i just hear them running and i'm like where D what i didn't know <laughs> but you learn something new every day have a generator on hand, okay? In case this ever happens to you. They're an investment, but it's good to have around. Anyways, I'm gonna get my fire started for the day so that I can make my breakfast. I'm gonna have some eggs. We have a ton of eggs that are farm fresh and good, so I'm gonna be using those. I also, today, my big project that I wanna figure out before Finley comes home is how I'm going to bathe myself over these next few days because, you know, it's not like I've never gone a few days without a shower, you know what I mean? But it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> if you're catching my drift, like I need to freshen up. I need to figure out how I'm going to, I'll probably just boil the water on the stove and like do a nice like sponge bath situation, but I need to figure out how to wash my hair. Cause like, that's why I'm just in the beanies. Like don't really know what to do about the hair. Also really need to get better about chopping wood. Like I'm really bad at it. And I think because I'm so unconfident in it, I'm not confident in my powerful swing. I also like, I can feel it in my neck today, how much exertion I put into chopping wood yesterday. And um, you know, maybe I just gotta get used to that. Just kind of shake it out, you know? But we do have to start our morning by chopping more wood. So I'm gonna do that. I probably won't film it though, cause again, I'm a little embarrassed about my lack of ability, okay? Anyways, happy Valentine's Day. This is what I'm doing. And I'm wearing red. I've been wearing the same outfit for two days straight. So it's not really like I put this on to celebrate anything. But ooh, speaking of celebrating, here's the date jar I made with old wildflower cases stickers. You're the Glock to my Rari, to Finn from Meg. <laughs> I just put it all over this pasta sauce bottle. And then at the top, I put this sticker that somebody sent to my PO box and I filled it up with date ideas. So that's one of his gifts today. All right, folks, the first fire of my morning is happening and I'm also preparing a little bit of coffee courtesy of Annie and Reed who came over to our house in 2018 and they had just been camping various places and they left their percolator here. I'm gonna chop these and just try to see if it works. And you know what's so funny is Finley and I asked for basically like a big hand grinder for Christmas and we didn't get it, but we wanted one. And now it would have really come in handy, but you know, it's okay, we'll do the big chop. That's always something that we could just get for ourselves. We need to, honestly. Like, I don't wanna rely on power to grind my beans. Now that is what I call coarsely ground. Okay, I'm gonna take like two tablespoons of this and then put the rest in an airtight container for tomorrow. Well, this is my life right now, if you're wondering used the uh, the percolator wrong, so um, was trying to open it and then it was really hot, flew out of my hand, and now we have this, so. Life is awesome when you don't know how to use something. Wow, girls, you're really wet. Have you been playing in the rain? You 
just been doing a little playing in the rain. Ducky, what about you, Peach? All right, guys, I just brushed my dirty ass hair. And I'm about to make some breakfast, more like brunch, because it's taken me a while to chop my wood, feed the hoggers, get everybody in order, and now I'm feeding myself. I'm making myself some damn eggs. Little pepper, little salt. Great. Also, for funsies, I'm adding in some homemade sun dried tomatoes because I love them. And I need my vegetables. I went out to the garden, and honestly, the deer have been eating my mustard greens so much and my kale, so I really just have beets. But I'm thinking for tonight, for our Valentine's Day dinner, I'll probably make like a big pot of soup on here because I have onion, garlic, potatoes, beets, tomato sauce, sun-dried tomatoes, rice and beans and like all that stuff. So I'll probably just make that for dinner tonight. I also have a bowl of water here just in case I want to use it for a sponge bath because I'm gross. Okay guys, I have a plan for the day right now. You know I love a good plan. I gotta know what's happening next. And um, I basically am planning to one, clean the whole house right now, just really quickly. I'm gonna load the dirty dishes, I think, into like a crate and take them down to the creek to wash them as well as wash my hair because I just want the dishes out of the way. Some of them are gross and had been in the sink before the power went out, so it's like now they're even stinkier. Before that, I'm just gonna like set a 20 minute timer and do a power clean. You know, things just need to be generally tidied. I'm a pretty tidy person, especially when I'm home alone, uh, but I definitely have to clean some surfaces, vacuum a bunch of the uh, wood and random stuff that's been tracked in from the mudroom and Then I'll just chill out until Finn gets home. My eggs were great by the way. Do you see this? My TV just turned on It's 3 30 and my heat just kicked on. I literally was just like power cleaning and oh my god. I Hope it stays fuck Do we have light? Wow. I mean, this is just, if this stays forever, oh lord, I'm gonna be partying. Okay, I'm honestly still in shock. I just called Finley and was like, I don't know if you have to do like a big grocery shop on the way. He did already buy the generator though, so that'll just be good to have around, or we could always return it, but I think it's nice to have around. Anyways, we came to the conclusion that either way, we're um, just gonna spend the night at home for V-Day, be in just hanging out with the dogs, making our own food, whatever. Um, but I am about to take a celebratory shower because I was just about to go and wash my hair in the creek. Like that was my plan <laughs> after I finished my power clean. But I'm so gross. The dirt under my nails, I can't wait to bring my little scrubby nail brush in with me to the freaking shower and just, just go to town. All right, so I'll talk to you later. Yeehaw. Can't believe it. After my shower, I changed into my Valentine's Day red, my Speak Now Tour shirt. This was legendary. So, Finley's getting home around 9 p.m. I just did the dishes. I, when I was in the shower, I feel like it's worth it to mention that the lights were flickering a little bit and I was just like, please, Please stay on, I have conditioner in my hair. And it stayed on, so that's great. I still have the fire going just in case um, because it's easier to build up a bigger fire once you still have some hot coals in there, you know? But I am, my wood supply is very low. So I'm looking for a cord of wood on my community Facebook page right now, but no hits yet. Anywho's, what else did I do? Yeah, I did all the dishes, I cleaned the kitchen, vacuumed, I just did a bigger clean after my 20 minute power clean earlier when the power first went back on um, because I was like, well, why the hell not? Like we have power now, so might as well do anything with water. So I'm also doing a load of laundry. Like I'm really taking advantage of it, guys, just in case it happens to go out again, which would be horrible and I really don't want that to happen. So just listen to me now. All right, power for the rest of the night. I'm looking forward to it. Anyways, that's my night. 
Gonna make some homemade butternut squash curry soon as well, which I am very much so looking forward to. Now this is what I call gorgeous darlings. What's really awesome about this curry recipe, which I'll link down below, is one, it was so freaking easy, and two, I could have made this like over the wood stove. I definitely didn't need to do it over here, I just wanted to because it cooks faster this way. But yeah, man, I mean, this was a pretty easy recipe. It's literally just like four cups of butternut squash and I already had that canned and half an onion and three garlic cloves and then just like some spices and serve it over rice. Gonna leave this out in case Finley wants some when he gets home. And wow, I mean, bone apple tip. I'm so excited. All right, folks, I set up for my Valentine. I brought out these old F&M books that I think Lindsay and I got these red ones from Anthropology, and then when I moved into Finley's apartment before we left LA, I went and I bought him a matching one. Um, this is actually a re-gift. I just wanted to put it out because I saw it on his bedside table and I was like, I just want to add this to the display this evening. But the memory book has a final cover. I just figured I'd keep it simple. It's a simple book, you know? Pretty to the point. I put the crystal glasses, the champagne flutes that my parents gave us as an engagement gift that they got as an engagement gift on the table just to spice it up, hoping he brings home some kind of a beverage. Also, <laughs> I added just a little sticker that says date jar to the front of it so we know what it is. And this keeps falling off of like my door in the office that has all of the art on it. It keeps the tape just needs to be replaced or I need to like, you know, find a better way to put it in there. So I just put it back there for now. So cute, love it. The kitchen's clean. We just have our dishes out that I use tonight. The whole house is clean. She's looking gorgeous, darlings. I also braided my hair and changed into something a little more comfortable. <laughs> I don't think I'll vlog when Finley first comes in, like surprising him or anything, but maybe we'll vlog together later or I, who knows. You know, just wanted to let you know. We're gonna be hanging out. Hello folks, it is the morning of February 15th right now. Finley is back home. Say hello, my darling. Hello. <laughs> We're about to play Stardew Valley co-op. Getting stoked. We're very excited about co-op settings in Stardew and very excited that our power is back on to play this. Um, so I just wanted to generally give you an update on the power. The only places in our town that are still out have power outage issues because of fallen trees on the line or like the line specifically like broke in a part. Like Oya and John still don't have power and are running off of a generator because their line split to their house but they have solar up at their shop so they're bringing down their like solar pod today to like take showers i've been checking in with them all that good stuff they said that they don't need anything and that they've been running a generator to like power their computers to get work done and stuff like that for periods of time and then they have natural um well water coming in so they don't need water or anything and they've been running fridges and whatnot so they're good they're heating their house through wood stove heat as well and then i actually posted on our community facebook page last night because we're running out of firewood and i need more <laughs> and i guess our friend athena saw it and noticed that nobody had given me any recommendations for the wood so she texted me and I woke up to a message from her that was basically like if you need to harvest wood you can come here and harvest any of the trees on our property because they own that land so they can like cut the trees down and use them and all that stuff and we just rent here anywho I told her um, we're just going off of our regular heating right now just so we don't dwindle the wood supply that but that we might you know take her up on that offer and Steve offered us free wood as well so I don't think that we should like buy more wood basically we just need to like put in the labor you know haul it and whatnot um but athena also still doesn't have power because a tree fell on their line so i'm like fuck man me and steve we're chilling now but my two other friends in town they do not have power so i've just been checking in with them i just wanted to give you guys an update um i know that certain areas like still don't have power at all restored like a bunch of different towns around so um that's kind of a bummer but i'm hoping in the next few days it will be fully restored but either way you still saw me you know just hanging the hell out just surviving 
for those few days. You did and a fantastic job, baby. Thank you. We're all so proud of you. The dogs are so proud of you. <laughs> the vlog is so proud of you. <laughs> well, I'm very happy that Finley's home now. We had a lovely Valentine's Day. We were just hanging the hell out and catching up on all of the things. And tonight I'm gonna stream on Twitch at 6 p.m. Pacific time. If you didn't know, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on twitch.tv slash Megan Hughes. You can also find me on patreon.com slash Megan Hughes. All of the things. Join I have all Patreon. the things. They're awesome. <laughs> Join us. <laughs> he loves them. Um, I love you guys. Thank you for watching me just do all of the survival things these past few days. It was really nice to hang out with you when I could only talk to my dogs. You know, my dogs don't reply back, so it's really getting pretty isolating there. <laughs> but I love you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a big thumbs up for me, and I will see you in my next video. Okay? Stay smiling. Bye, guys. I love that you're like, the dogs don't respond back as if the vlog does, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't either until you fucking comment, so leave me a comment. <laughs>